Hey there riders, MotoJourno Chris here today with the Harley Davidson Street Glide ST. As you can see here, 2022 model with the Milwaukee 8117 engine in it. So this is one of the big performance models. However, it is a single seater and it's a more touring inspired model with the nice big batwing fairing on the front and the panniers on the back, the hard panniers or hard luggage. And I wanted to talk about the ergonomics or rider fit of this particular bike. Now for context, I'm 180 centimeters. 32 inch inseam and I weigh about 70, 75 kilos. So I'm a smaller rider, I guess I would say. And I did find the Street Glide a little bit intimidating. It's not to say it's not well balanced or anything like that. And it's got a 7, 10 mil seat height, which is on the lower side of things. But this is a big bike, it's a heavy bike. And in some ways, I think it just demands that little bit more respect, which may be the norm with these larger Harleys. However, to be honest, I haven't tested a lot of the larger Harleys and that may just be showing through with the fact that I'm kind of noticing this bike I need to be a little bit more respectful of from the ergonomics perspective. 710 mil seat height, as you can see here, I've actually got it in gear and I'd recommend always leaving it in gear, never in neutral because it can roll and it really settles onto that side stand at quite an angle, so that's something to keep in mind. The bike is well balanced, but with this big fork mounted batwing fairing, it's adding a lot of tall weight on the bike, which you do notice a little bit, which just gives it that little bit more top heaviness. And I think that's probably the main thing which I'm noticing when I'm jumping on the bike and where I normally wouldn't have two feet down in most situations on most bikes. On this bike, uh, particularly stopped, I've actually felt that that was a nice precaution. The 7 10 mil seat height is low, however it's a very wide seat, very very wide seat, so you do need to again keep that in mind because while there's you know a, a little bit of extra room there, the sheer wideness of the seat has meant that I wouldn't want this bike to be all that much taller as far as the seat. But it is a touring bike as well, so being able to stretch out a little bit is important and you've got the foot controls and the floorboards there which are the forward foot controls and that's again something that I didn't gel with particularly well. I generally found that I had kind of my feet in this kind of position, more in a mid control position, and I wasn't covering the brake or ready to shift gears without moving my foot. So that was something I had to be mindful of again. When it comes to this forward batwing fairing, it's fork mounted as I mentioned, so it is mounted on those forks and the weight is all carried through it. The turning circle is you know, pretty good. You can really turn that and I would say at lower speeds you're using quite a lot of handlebar input to turn the bike just because it is heavy, long and low. Uh, good vision through the mirrors. You've got the speakers there and then you've got four gauges with the central two being speed and your taco, which is nice to see. There's actually a little digital display within the speedo, which you can toggle through for your trip meters, your odo and your TPMS, your tire pressures, which is standard fitment, very nice to see. And then there's a big TFT display, which you can run your music through, sync your phone up to and has onboard navigation, which again, you know, this bike is a pricey premium machine. So you would expect that kind of stuff. Things I find a little bit more surprising, no adjustable levers, which is something I feel really any bike over 30 grand should probably include. Uh, but, you know, they work for me. I'm a size, say, extra large in gloves, but I wouldn't want to be a much smaller glove size because I think I might struggle with those levers. Obviously, master cylinder on the brake side of things, and these, uh, these bars do seem rubber-mounted, no vibes or anything that I noticed through those, and it's just a regular clutch. It's not a hydraulic clutch. Quite busy switch blocks, traction control horn, high beam, indicator on either side then you've got a home button for your tft and you've got a little like uh, a little toggle which goes you know all directions and that lets you go through the settings but it's also a touch screen display which is nice uh, then you've got your kill switch starter and hazard lights fairly simple there are some extra buttons or not really even buttons they're just like kind of little button looking things down here and there's a little ignition fob which you turn on to turn the bike but apparently you can actually just disable that and not use it at all. As far as the seating position, fairly relaxed. I like the seat, it's sculpted and the back of the seat provides a lot of support for my lower back and my bum which means I can really like go, get back into the back of the seat and be quite comfortable in it. Reach to the bars, they're fairly tall, they're very very wide but it works. I think me being longer legged where I'm actually hitting my shin against the air intake and a shorter torso is working against me on this bike. 
but it is what it is. It's going to vary by rider. The screen, the wind protection is good. Uh, obviously quite a bit of wind onto my legs, which because it's winter, I really noticed that, but otherwise good level of wind protection. Felt a little bit of wind off the top of my helmet. Uh, however, this screen is generally right on my eye line where I want to look, so I can kind of look, crouch down and look through it, or try and sit up a little bit straighter. And I was finding I just had a little bit of back pain riding this bike for, I think, after about five and a half hours or so. But again, I was carrying my camera bag, which could be a contributing factor there. So obviously, that's it settling onto the side stand. Again, be very careful with the weight of this bike. You do not want to be pushing this bike around anywhere but flat ground, I would say. And even then, I, I would be careful. Uh, because the, that top heaviness of the Batwing does contribute to, you really feel the balance point and you really feel as it kind of oscillates between the two. And it's not that I've really come close to dropping it, but I've had to really respect the bike because I can just feel the amount of weight there is there. No pillion seat, no pillion pegs, nothing like that to worry about. And so obviously this is very much a one rider setup. Great kind of panniers on the back. As far as the ergonomics, these are nice and low, simple latch system and they are lockable. Uh, but the sheer width of the bike does mean that I've been finding myself kicking them, uh, getting that leg over. And you do want to be careful of that because obviously you're going to mark the paint doing it too often. There's like some scuffs on it now. Hopefully, I don't think anything that's permanent, uh, but you would really want to be careful, particularly if you're wearing boots with any hard parts on them. So that's another consideration. Uh, apart from that, really cool machine. Check out my full review to get a more in-depth kind of idea of how the bike rides, because obviously this is just talking about the ergonomic side of things. It's got a nice wide tank on it, quite easy to grab between your knees as well. I like the riding triangle, even though obviously my feet are quite back on those floorboards for me to sit naturally on the bike. And I think, again, as I said, me having longer legs kind of worked against me there. It's a really cool machine though. I guess the one caveat I would say is if you're concerned about a really heavy bike, then perhaps this is not the bike for you. But if you're okay with kind of handling a heavier machine, even keeping in mind it's got a quite low seat height, I do think this is a bike which commands a little bit more respect and that's even before we start talking about the level of performance on offer which is really good too. Anyway, if you've got any questions about the Street Glide ST, let me know in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. As always, stay safe out there, thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.